Captive Insurance and Captive Insurance Plans Welcome to the Risk Management of Everything channel. On this channel, you will see videos on risk management and the application of risk management to diverse areas and sectors. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you. This video discusses captive insurance and captive insurance plans. In this video, we described captives and discussed the origin of captive, types of captive insurance plans, ideal firms for captives, advantages and disadvantages of captive insurance plan, the domicile of captives, considerations for captive domicile, and regulation of captives. Now, let us start. What is a captive? A captive insurance company is a subsidiary formed by a private company to finance its retained losses in a formal structure based on the guidance of an appropriate insurance sector regulator. A captive insurance company is an insurance subsidiary of a non-insurance entity or parent and is owned by the insured. Captive insurance companies are normally formed to supplement commercial insurance, allowing companies to retain the money that would otherwise be spent on insurance premiums. Captives are essentially a form of self-insurance whereby the insurer is owned wholly by the insured. Once established, the captive operates like any commercial insurer. A captive insurer issues policies, collects premiums, and pays claims but does not offer public insurance. Captive insurance is an attractive alternative to self-insurance. It is regulated as a captive rather than as a traditional insurer. A captive insurer is a subsidiary formed to insure loss exposures of its parent company, or companies, and affiliates whose primary purpose usually is to reduce the parent's cost of risk. Generally, a captive insurer is an insurance company that is wholly owned and controlled by its insureds. Its primary purpose is to insure the risks of its owners, and its insureds benefit from the captive insurer's underwriting profits. A risk management professional may decide to use a captive insurance plan depending on its advantages and disadvantages compared to other risk financing alternatives. Hence, it is essential to understand the purpose and operations of captive insurance plans. In its simplest form, a captive is a fully owned subsidiary created to provide insurance to its non-insurance parent company, or companies. Captives are established to meet the risk management needs of the owners or members. The origin of captive. The captive concept has been around for a long time. In the early 1500s, ship owners met in the London coffee houses where they retained, shed, and transferred the cost of risk associated with their ships, known today as captives. The first active captive insurance company in the United States was started in Ohio by Frederick Rice, a property engineer who became an insurance broker. Frederick Rice founded Steel Insurance Company of America in 1953 for Youngstown Sheet and Tube Company in Ohio. Rice drew the term captive from the steel company's captive mines, which were sending ore back to the company's mills. Rice, known as the father of captive insurance, used the term captive to describe an insurance company he helped form to provide insurance coverage solely to the parent. In 1958, Rice incorporated American risk management and began to assist corporations in setting up captives. During this time, the United States regulations made it prohibitively expensive to form and operate captives in the United States, leading Rice to seek out other jurisdictions to allow his captive idea to flourish. In 1960, Bermuda became an offshore financial center, and, in 1962, Rice set up the first modern-day captive there called International Risk Management Limited. During the 1700s and 1800s, mutual insurance companies were formed by members of a particular industry to provide insurance coverage. The captive concept took a while to catch on. It gained momentum in the mid to late 1980s during the complex commercial insurance market when liability coverage was either unavailable or unaffordable for many buyers. Over the past three decades, there has been significant growth in the captive market. Today, more than 5,000 captives operate around the world in a variety of industries, compared to roughly 1,000 in 1980. Almost 3,000 captives are domiciled in the Caribbean, 
1,200 captives are domiciled in Europe and Asia, and more than 1,000 captives are domiciled in the United States. The Purpose of a Captive While it is true that a purpose of a captive insurance company is to generate revenue, this is not the fundamental reason for the creation of a captive insurance company. Captive is licensed to operate as a bona fide insurance company. The purpose of an insurance company, including a captive, is to pay losses, that is own losses, and to afford the organization, which is the owner, more control over its risks and losses that occur. This is necessary because the captive must settle claims and secure future losses. It is important to view a captive as a cost-effective solution and structure it in a way that enables the company to participate in the profits of its own risk and not just accept the additional costs without the added benefits. To achieve real cost savings, a captive should be adequately financed and well-structured to undertake significant risks. Captives are an alternative risk transfer mechanism used by organizations to finance risks. Captives are neither inherently mysterious nor illegal, but neither are they suitable for all situations. The fact that the insured and associated entities, that is the parent and sister's companies, are the owners of the captive does not mean that the captive insurance company is not a separate and distinct entity. The captive company is licensed to operate as an independent entity, and the parent company must not interfere in the captive operations. A captive is a business distinct and separate from its primary operating business, that is the parent company, regardless of the structure of the captive insurance company. Consequently, close attention must be paid to the formation and operation of a captive, or the consequences might nullify the advantages. Captive insurance is utilized by insureds or organizations that decide to, 1. Put their own capital at risk by creating their own insurance company, 2. Work outside the commercial insurance marketplace, and 3. Achieve their risk financing objectives. When the products offered by commercial insurers do not meet an insured's risk financing needs, the best option might be to form a captive insurer. The main reasons for utilizing captive insurance by organizations include 1. High premium of commercial insurance contracts. 2. Broader coverage. 3. Stability in pricing and availability. 4. Improved cash flow, and 5. Increased control over the program. Let us discuss the reasons for utilizing captive insurance. 1. High premium of commercial insurance contracts. The main reasons why organizations wish to better control their risk management programs are excessive pricing, limited capacity, the coverage that is unavailable in the traditional insurance market, or the desire for a more cost-efficient risk financing mechanism. 2. Broader coverage. Many captives are established because insurance in the commercial insurance market is highly expensive, poorly matched the insured's needs, or the required insurance coverage is not available. A captive insurer can successfully provide coverage for difficult risks that are tailored to fit the exact needs of the insured, provided the captive operates based on sound underwriting, actuarial, and regulatory guidelines. 3. Stability in pricing and availability. Pricing stability is achieved over time as a captive matures and expands its own risk retention capability. The more capital that is accumulated, the greater the captive insurer's ability to retain risk and insulate itself from changes in the commercial insurance market. A captive insurer can also provide stability in the availability of coverage. 4. Improved cash flow. Captive cash flow improvements can be achieved in several ways. Losses retained through a captive reduce or eliminate underwriting profits, reduced losses increase them. Safety and loss control should be embraced by captive companies because captive insurance inherently offers financial rewards for effectively controlling losses. The underwriting profits and gains from the invested premiums that would otherwise be held by a conventional insurer are retained by the captive. Even with conservative investment portfolios, the dollar amounts are substantial due to the high levels of capital and surplus typically held. Cash flow can also be improved by reducing the expense factors associated with commercial insurance. Generally, 
insurers allot 60% or more of premiums taken into loss payments, while the other 40% or so covers expenses and profits. Captives have far fewer expense components than commercial insurers. Estimates for the expensive components of captives often range between 15 and 30 percent. This means that for every $10 million in net written premium, a successful operating captive can save insureds $1 million to $2.5 million in expenses. 5. Increased control over the program. Ownership and control by its insureds distinguish a captive insurer from a commercial insurer. This is not the type of ownership or control evidenced by a nominal percentage share in the company's surplus. It means ownership of the company's strategic business purpose. Captive insurers offer increased control in several ways. For example, captive owners have more control over insurance-related services such as safety and loss control and claims administration. Safety and loss control services established by a captive can be tailored to each participant's individual needs, thereby ensuring safer workplaces and favorable loss experiences. Claims handling services are unbundled and separately arranged. Strict guidelines can be drafted and enforced by the captive. This is preferable to allowing a commercial insurer, whose interests might be more self-serving than an insured desire, to dictate how claims are handled. Captives versus Traditional Insurance Traditional insurance transactions begin by providing an insurance company information used for underwriting and determining premiums, which are paid as a consideration in a contract, policy, issued by the insurance company that obligates the company to repay losses of the policyholder under the specified conditions of the contract. However, if circumstances warrant, as they often do, other options may be sought where alternative risk financing and transfer mechanisms may prove quite useful in addressing the unmet needs of companies from traditional insurance. One of these options is captive insurance. The best captive insurance companies are those created and utilized by companies that understand their risk profile better than the traditional market does having superior loss histories and more robust risk management in place. These captives are run and operated by sophisticated companies looking for greater control over their risk and their risk financing. When premiums are due, components of the premium can be unbundled so that the captive owner can see rates and pricing on a granular level. This gives underwriting access that can be leveraged in a way that is more consistent with risk data and risk experience. This unbundling helps to control costs and gives direct insight into how ongoing risk management techniques and practices are directly affecting premiums. While there are numerous differences between traditional insurance companies and captives, it is important to state that alternative risk financing is not opposed to traditional insurance. Many traditional insurers own or work very closely with captives and the alternative risk financing market. Traditional insurance companies, possessing significant financial strength, will often be needed to reimburse claims resulting from large or even catastrophic losses, while they usually prefer insureds to retain costs associated with less severe risks. In this case, a captive can be used to shift costs to the insured. Other cost-shifting techniques are deductibles, retentions, and coinsurance. All these options, including a captive, provide a mutually beneficial situation offering more control to the insured and eliminating certain costs for the insurer. Types of Captive Insurance Plans There are various types of captives, depending on the parent company or owner's needs. Most captives insure only the risks of their parent. This is a pure captive. The types of captives in use continue to evolve and proliferate to address the growing need for alternative risk transfer. Types of captive insurance include pure captive, group captive, risk retention group, agency captive, renter captive, protected cell company, association captive, industrial captive, branch captive, and special purpose captive. Now, let us discuss these types of captives. 1. Pure captives. Pure captives are captive insurers that are fully owned, directly or indirectly, by their insureds. Pure Captive is a captive insurer owned by one company that insures all or part of the loss exposures of that company. 
Pure Captive underwrites only the risks of its parent and its associate companies. Pure Captive structures are often called wholly owned or single parent captives. Hence, single parent captives have only one owner. 2. Group Captive Group Captive is a captive insurer owned by a group of companies, usually operating similar businesses, rather than a single parent. It is established by a group of companies with similar businesses or exposures to writing only the risks of its owners and associated companies. Companies form captives to mitigate their exposure to a wide range of risks. A captive can provide practically every risk underwritten by a commercial insurer. A group captive that an association sponsors is referred to as association captive. 3. Risk Retention Group Risk Retention Group is a group captive formed under the requirements of the United States, U.S., Liability Risk Retention Act of 1986 to provide liability coverage, except personal insurance, employers' liability, and workers' compensation. A risk retention group is an association or group captive formed for the principal purpose of assuming and spreading risk for commercial liability exposure. All risk retention groups are licensed as CAPTI VES. The U.S. Liability Risk Retention Act of 1986 limits many of the regulatory requirements that otherwise might be imposed on risk retention groups by non domiciliary states. 4. Agency Captive Agency captive is a type of group captive owned by insurance agents or brokers rather than by the organizations insured. An agency captive allows agents or brokers to assume a portion of the risk, thereby generating underwriting and investment income. Unlike other forms of captives, agency captives are not designed to provide insurance for their owners. Instead, they benefit the insurer, agent, or broker that owns the company. Agents and brokers are often compelled to form captives to provide markets for their clients when the insurance market is in a hard cycle. 5. Rental Captive Rental captive is an arrangement whereby an organization rents capital from a captive insurer. It pays a premium and receives reimbursement for its losses. Hence, a rental captive is a captive owned by an outside organization and open to participants for a fee. Members rent licenses and capital from the renter captive owner. A renter captive or rental captive is often used by entities that prefer not to form their dedicated captive or for a too small program to justify incorporating its captive. Each insured keeps its premium and loss account, and there is no risk shifting or distribution among members of a renter captive. 6. Protected Cell Company Protected Cell Company also known as segregated cell captives, is a group captive in which each participant pays premiums and receives reimbursement for its losses from, as well as credit for, underwriting profits and investment income. Protected cell captives are similar to rental captives. However, protected cell companies offer broader protection, and the assets of each user are protected from one another by law. With a protected cell company, each participant is assured that other participants will not be able to access its capital and surplus if the other participants become insolvent. Each participant is also assured that third-party creditors cannot access their assets. This protection does not necessarily exist with a renter captive structure, which involves purchasing preferred stock by participants. 7. Association Captive an association captive is a captive insurance company that has as its primary purpose the insurance of the risks of the members of an association that either sponsors or owns the captive. Association captive insures risks of the member organizations of the association and their affiliated companies. An association captive insurance company is owned by members of a common industry or trade association and is designed to insure the risks of that industry among its members participation is limited to members of the association. It is similar to a group captive except that it is sponsored or owned by a group of entities within a particular organization with each common insurance needs and similar exposures. Benefits of association captives include, 1, attract new members and boost their non-dues income. 2, allows associations to tailor insurance protection where members need it most. 3, provides access to increased coverage and capacity. 4. 
allows for greater underwriting flexibility. 5. Gain direct access to wholesale reinsurance markets. 6. Increased risk control and more cost-effective administration to help lower premium costs. 7. Ability to earn underwriting income as well as investment income on the reserves held to pay for future losses. 8. Favorable tax benefits. 8. Industrial captive. An industrial captive is an insurance company that insures risks of the industrial insureds that comprise the industrial insured group and their affiliated companies. Industrial insured captive insurance company means any company that insures risks of the industrial insured that comprise the industrial insured group and their affiliated companies. Industrial insured group means any group of industrial insureds that collectively owns, controls, or holds with power to vote all the outstanding voting securities of an industrial insured captive insurance company incorporated as a stock insurer or mutual insurer. 9. Branch Captive Branch Captive is a branch of an existing alien insurer that is licensed to write business in a state. It is an alien captive licensed by the commissioner to transact the business of insurance through a business with its principal place of business in a district or state. An alien captive insurance company licensed by the insurance commissioner to transact the business of insurance in a state, for example, within the United States, through a business unit with a principal place of business in the state. A branch captive insurance company must be a pure captive insurance company with respect to operations in a specified state or district, for example, Oklahoma or New Jersey, unless otherwise permitted by the insurance commissioner. 10. Special Purpose Captive Special Purpose Captive Insurance Company is a captive insurance company that is formed or licensed under a state or district. For example, Oklahoma or New Jersey Captive Insurance Company Act, that does not meet the definition of any other type of captive insurance company defined in the Act and is designated as a special purpose captive insurance company by the Commissioner. Categorization of Captive Insurance Companies Captive insurers can be classified into two main categories, pure captives and sponsored captives. Let us discuss these two categories of captive insurers. Pure Captive Insurers Pure captives are captive insurance companies that are fully owned, directly or indirectly, by their insureds. A group captive is formed by a group of individuals or entities that come together to jointly own a captive insurance company. Industrial insured group owned captives typically insure only insureds in the same industry group, or with homogeneous risk, which creates group buying power and other risk management efficiencies. Another kind of group-owned captive allows a group of insureds from entirely different industry groups to own a captive jointly. This type of heterogeneous group captive may be a reinsurance pool, formed to create underwriting capacity through the pooling of risk. A reinsurance pool does not provide direct insurance. It reinsures either the captives of its owners or the admitted insurers that issue policies to the pool's owners. The group captive or pool may also provide other risk management services for the group. Sponsored Captive Insurers Sponsored captives are captive insurance companies owned and controlled by parties unrelated to the insured. Sponsored captive insurers, sometimes referred to as non-owned or non-affiliated captives, have some elements of pure captive insurers. The insureds are required to put their capital at risk. Risks are financed outside of the commercial regulatory environment, and the purpose is to achieve the risk financing objectives of the captive's insureds. However, a sponsored captive is not formed by its insureds, known as participants, and a sponsored captive does not necessarily pull all its insureds' risks. A sponsored captive may be set up by an insurance industry-related entity to be used by its clients, or there may be no previous connection between the sponsor and the participants. The sponsor contributes the captive's statutory capital, sometimes called core capital. Many sponsored captives do not require insureds to pay in the capital, but simply to pay an access fee. These are sometimes referred to as rental captives. A sponsored captive does not necessarily pool the risks of its insureds. It may keep a separate underwriting account for each insured participant. 
In some domiciles, these accounts are legally separated or protected, and the term sell captive is used, meaning that the assets in one participant's account may not be used to pay liabilities in another unless the respective participants have entered into an agreement to do so. This is a key difference between a pure group captive and a sponsored captive. The sponsored captive can be structured to maintain legally separate underwriting accounts, whereas an insured that is a member or owner in a pure group captive shares risk with the other captive insureds. Insureds who are shareholders or members of an industrial insured group captive must contribute capital to access the captive insurance program, and their capital is at risk based on the performance of the group. In a sponsored, rented, segregated sell captive, each participant's risk capital is typically only exposed to the risk of its own underwriting performance. If required under domiciliary law, the sponsor's core capital may be at risk. This would mean that if one insured becomes bankrupt or otherwise defaults on its obligations, producing an insolvent sell or underfunded underwriting account, liabilities of the sell would become liabilities of the sponsor. In domiciles that do not have the legal requirements that the sponsor's core capital is at risk, the sell participant may be required to sign an agreement that losses paid under policies issued or reinsured by the captive are limited to the assets in the participant's sell. Sponsored captives may be used by insureds that are too small to own their own captives. The captive sell program acts as an incubator for these small insureds to begin a captive program. When sufficient surplus has been accumulated, an insured has the option of using those funds to set up its own pure captive insurance company. A captive insurer may be formed by an association for the benefit of its members. Does this make it a sponsored captive? Not exactly. The association captive is pure, meaning that it insures only the risks of its owners. The sponsoring association may contribute 100% of the required capital, but since the association is owned by its members, its members indirectly own and have voting control over the captive insurance company. Ideal firms for captive. The use of a captive should be considered for firms that meet the following six criteria. 1. Profitable business entities seeking substantial annual adjustable tax deductions. 2. Businesses with multiple entities or those that can create multiple operating subsidiaries or affiliates. 3. Businesses with high net worth and sustainable operating profits. 4. Businesses with requisite risks and currently uninsured or underinsured. 5. Businesses owners who are interested in personal wealth accumulation and family wealth transfer strategies. 6. Businesses where the owners are looking for asset protection. Advantages of Captive Insurance Plan Advantages of using a captive insurance plan, compared with other risk financing methods, include, 1. Greater control over claims. 2. Increased coverage because insurance coverage is provided based on clients' needs. 3. Enables increased capacity. 4. Underwriting flexibility. 5. Facilitates easy access to the reinsurance market. 6. Promotes incentive for loss control. 7. Facilitates reduction of insurance costs. 8. Stability of insurance premium pricing. 9. Underwriting profit is retained with the company or group of companies that own the captive. 10. Improved claims review and processing. 11. Covers are purchased based on need. 12. Tax benefits. 13. Investment income is retained by the captive. 14. Captive constitutes an additional source of profit for the parent and sister's companies. Disadvantages of Captive Insurance Plan Disadvantages of using a captive insurance plan, compared with other risk financing plans, include, 1. Capital requirement and startup cost. 2. Sensitivity to losses. 3. Pressure from parent company management, and 4. Payment of premium taxes and residual market loadings. Domicile of Captives A domicile in a jurisdiction in which a captive insurer is incorporated and regulated. Captives can be formed in a vast number of domiciles, both onshore, for example, located within the jurisdiction of the United States, and offshore, for example, located outside the jurisdiction of the United States. 
Captives were initially formed in offshore tax haven jurisdictions such as Bermuda or the Cayman Islands. Over the years, however, these long-standing offshore domiciles have been joined by Vermont and other the United States and places as far apart as Malta, Panama, Singapore, Dubai, and Bahrain. The number of captive domiciles is growing and remains competitive. Many new domiciles are attempting to emulate the success of some of the major domiciles. In terms of the number of licensed captive insurers, Bermuda remains the largest jurisdiction, followed by the Cayman Islands. Barbados, Guernsey, Luxembourg and Ireland are also market leaders. In the United States, Vermont has more captive insurers than any other jurisdiction and is considered a leader in captive legislation. An important factor in establishing a captive is determining where it will be domiciled. USA companies have the option of domiciling onshore or offshore. Many jurisdictions encourage captive insurers to locate within their territories by offering favorable regulations and imposing little or no tax. These jurisdictions view captive insurance as an industry that boosts economies by providing employment and other income, such as annual registration fees. The decision largely depends upon an organization's analysis of a given domicile's benefits and drawbacks considerations for captive domicile. When evaluating the choice of domicile for a captive insurer, the following should be considered. 1. Minimum premium requirements. 2. Minimum capitalizations and solvency requirements. 3. Incorporation and registration expenses. 4. Types of insurance that can be written. 5. Applicable taxes, local and international. 6. Operation costs and fee levels. 7. The captive insurer's experience. 8. Permitted lines of business. 9. The general regulatory environment. 10. Restrictions on permissible investments, investment restrictions. 11. Parent company's industry, and 12. Ease and reliability of communications and traveling to and from the domicile. Regulation of captives. The fundamental purpose of insurance regulation is to protect policyholders, investors, and other stakeholders. A captive is different from a commercial insurance company because it serves mainly its parent company. Like traditional insurance companies, captives are regulated by the state in which their headquarters is located. Hence, Captives are regulated differently than traditional insurance companies that serve the public. Each domiciliary regulator requires an annual audited report by an independent firm, or its equivalent, with industry-specific experience in the insurance industry. Many domiciliary regulators also require a formal actuarial review of the captive's pricing and loss reserve methodology policy. Fronting Arrangements and Reasons Captive Insurers Use Fronting what is fronting? Fronting refers to the use of a licensed, admitted insurer to issue an insurance policy on behalf of a self-insured organization or captive insurer without the intention of transferring any risk. The risk of loss is retained by the self-insured or captive insurer through an indemnity or reinsurance agreement. The captive insurer is an unlicensed, non-admitted insurer except in its own domicile. Generally, it is illegal for an unlicensed insurer to issue policies. So, it is often necessary for the captive insurer to contract with the duly licensed insurer to issue a policy even if the captive desires to be the main risk bearer. The fronting company, insurer, would be required to honor the obligations imposed by the policy if the self-insurer or captive failed to indemnify it. Therefore, the fronting company is subject to credit risk because of the arrangement, and fronting companies charge a fee for this service. The primary purpose of F. Fronting is compliance with insurance regulations. However, an important secondary purpose is to access services such as claims handling and risk control, as well as excess risk transfer capacity, from the fronting insurer in a cost-effective manner. The services typically provided by fronting companies is beyond policy issuance. Besides issuance of insurance policies, services offered by fronting companies to captive insurers include engineering and risk control, issuance of certificates of insurance, premium auditing, 
placement of excess coverage, reinsurance placements, and other required documentation filings. Why do captive insurers use fronting arrangements? Fronting arrangements allow captives to comply with financial responsibility laws imposed by many states that require evidence of coverage written by an admitted insurer, such as for auto liability and workers' compensation insurance. Fronting arrangements may also be used when business contracts with other organizations, such as leases, service contracts, and construction contracts, require evidence of coverage through an admitted insurer. The insured may face a contractual requirement that stipulates the use of insurers that meet a minimum financial rating to issue the insurance policy for a particular risk. By utilizing a fronting insurer, the certificates of insurance, as well as the policies, would be issued utilizing the name and license paper of the fronting company, thereby meeting the contract's requirements. An insured may also be required to have a licensed insurance company issue the policy for a particular risk. By utilizing the licensing of the fronting company, the captive insurer does not have to maintain licenses in each of the states where business is written. Another good reason for utilizing a fronting company is to potentially enhance the ability to achieve tax deductibility. By using a fronting company, the insured may be in a better position to deduct its premium payments for the insurance placed through the fronting company and ultimately through the captive. Under self-insurance programs, tax deductions are allowed only for paid losses and not for loss reserves or for incurred but not reported IBNR, amounts. How does a fronting arrangement work? Fronting is a specialized form of reinsurance. A commercial insurance company, fronting company, is licensed in a state or states where a risk from the captive is located. The insurance policy is issued by the fronting company, and then through contractual agreement, fronting agreement, the risk is transferred to the captive. The insured receives a policy from the fronting company but the risk covered by the program ultimately resides with the captive insurance company. The cost of using a fronting company is based on a percentage of gross written premiums. For example, the percentage charged might be somewhere between 6 and 10 percent depending on the scope of services PR provided by the fronting company and prevailing interest rates at the time the arrangement is made. What this means for the captive is that for every $1 in premium, 6 cents to 10 cents of that will be sent to the fronting company. The balance can be maintained within the captive insurer to cover the costs of losses, loss adjustment expenses, and administrative expenses. Since it faces credit risk from the arrangement, the fronting company will also require that the captive secure its obligation by using some type of collateral. The amount of collateral needed is addressed in the fronting agreement. The typical types of collateral are captive funds withheld by the fronting company, a trust agreement funded by the captive's investment securities, or a letter of credit issued on behalf of the captive. A fronting company, through its own actuarial department, will often require anywhere from 125% to 150% of the projected loss fund as collateral. The captive's own actuarial study will address the projected loss fund amount as well and may be used to negotiate the required amount of collateral if necessary. Due to the limited number of insurers offering fronting arrangements, it is imperative that captive owners maintain a solid business relationship with their front and strive for a long-term relationship. Moving from fronting company to fronting company on an annual basis is not advisable. This is because fronting entails significant risks for the fronting insurer. When a licensed insurer issues a policy, it is assuming a primary legal responsibility to pay a covered claim. The risk is then allocated through the fronting and reinsurance transaction, but the primary liability to pay the claim stays with the front. The insurer cannot escape this primary liability even if the reinsurer, such as a fronted captive, that is supposed to be sharing the risk cannot or does not perform. On the other hand, if the front fails, the insured may not only lose coverage while forfeiting premiums paid to date but could also even remain liable for future premium obligations to the front. Conclusion Captive insurance and captive insurance plans have been discussed in this video. In some ways, a captive insurance company resembles a mutual insurance company. Captive insurance is an attractive alternative to self-insurance.
Captives are established to meet the risk management needs of the owners or members. The owner of a captive place their own capital at risk, and they directly control their insurer. Captive insurance company owners are willing to risk their own capital in anticipation of the financial rewards associated with better control over their insurance program. These include broader coverage, stabilized pricing and availability of insurance, and improved cash flow. Fronting companies provide financial support and other forms of support that enable many captive insurers to meet their objectives. I hope the video is educative and beneficial to you. Please post your comments below in the comments section. If this video has been educative and beneficial to you, then, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for seeing the risk management of everything videos. We love to hear from you. Please post your comments and questions in the comment section down below. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel, Risk Management of Everything channel, and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.